Bye, Bye mate. Bye, buddy. Have a work as always. Hey guys, I'm here with Doug Burt today and um, you've all been asking about the mackerel rigs. So Doug's going to, uh, well he's been really nice and he's invited us into his shop here at Doug Burt's Tackle World on the Gold Coast. And he's going to show us how he sets up his mackerel rig that he catches all the mackerel on. So um, thanks Doug. Yeah, thanks Benny. It's going to be nice awesome. To see you mate. Thank you. Good. All right, well, so, sh show us what we do. Okay. okay, so what we're using here mate is, um, we've got a hook rig here that's, there's six O's, which is a size we can use on anything from uh, medium sized gar, to really big size WO pillies, uh, slime is it's very it's a perfect size, uh, and yakas and baits so that we on trial for, for the mackerel with. So we've got our three hooks here. We put lead. We use a split lead. You can see the split at the back here, and we we roll the lead onto the hook with a pair of pliers. You can see the crimping marks from our pliers, and it's fairly well fixed on there. And it only goes on the first hook. You can put a little bit of second lead on on the half rail on the the second hook here and only using half of that size here um, but preferably just the front's okay the other tools we're using um, to help make this rig is a little pink skirt which comes in many different colours but pink seems to be the go uh, we're using a nose cone which has a little split just here to start off which I'll show you in a moment how to do once we've done the haywire twist and, uh, and the wire and the wire we're using in this case is uh, I think this is around 58 pounds or 69 pounds, 58 I guess. So I tend to use like on that sort of size rig down to a little spotty mackerel rig, say 340, 350 hooks, 58. On my bigger rig hooks, uh, which are 7Os or 8Os, I'm using about 86 pounds, which is this wire here. But it has to be single strand to, to do the haywire twist to enable us to use this little thing here that holds it all intact. All right. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the skirt on first. Just, sorry Ben, just to let you know too, we have a swivel on the other end here mate. And that already has a little haywire twist on, on it. And that swivel size is about a size uh, four, four or five, somewhere in there. Use a crane swivel. Put the cone on with the little end to the swivel, or to the skirt. And then we come down to here. So to do this, um, we need to allow about that much to play with. So what we're gonna do is just stick it through here like this. And then it's really important that first turn that you do, you do it quite aggressively. Because you don't want to make it too long because otherwise it's too long and it makes the whole rig too long uh, to fit on the, on the small fish. So we try and keep it as short as we can. Once we've done that first turn, we go up from underneath and we do the second turn. And then we go up from underneath and do the next turn. And up from underneath and do the next turn. And you can see now, this this is like the main line, and this one here is the tag. So we've got our three little turns there. To straighten that up, we just push that there, bend that down, and happy days. And now what we do is we're going to finish it off by just going around the tag around the main line, around about four or five turns. And doing that, we just do like so. And my eyes aren't the best, but I've done a lot of these, so it's sort of, it's more of a feel thing. So we want to finish that up 90 degrees to the hook and to the line. So does that make sense? So if you sit that flat, that uh, wire is sitting pretty well perpendicular to, on right angles to the hook. Because that's going to go up underneath the chin of the fish, through the chin and out its nose. And the cone's going to come down and, uh, and screw up on the fish's head. So to me that's a little bit too long. Uh, I might just cut that back just a little bit. Just a, a thing to at home if you are cutting this off, be careful because it goes on the carpet or somewhere. Um, it can go into a little kid's foot or somewhere. So I always, always cut it down. So to me that's a good length. Okay, and what we're going to do now is when we put it on the fish, uh, up under his chin, out of his chin, through here and out his nose between his eyes mm -hmm. and this is going to then screw down at the top so I need to work out my placing on my first hook. So Benny we've got our bait here we've got a uh, mullet that's a little bit of a rubber tail mullet <laughs> so what we're going to do we're measuring it out to where the hooks are going to go 
Uh, generally, if I'm trolling size bait, I might go a bit bigger, but just for this instance, we'll use this one. And I want to measure that, so that's going to go through here and pop up through the top here. Mm -hmm. And happy days. So we'll start back here, the first hook in, and push down with your thumb as you turn it in to the body. Like so. I don't have a. It's an easy hook, this one. <laughs> you hole in him? Yeah, yeah. And then the last one, this is normally just behind his gills, but this one's actually got a lead in there, so we're going to cheat on this one. Oh, it's actually going to make this stick out of it now. That's alright. Anyway, you get the gist, there's actually a big piece of lead in here, so I can't push that out anymore. <laughs> but I'm not using excuses, but telling the truth. And then we use this one here. It's going to go up through here. So see how that's on a bit of an angle of that? You may just want to bend that forward just a little bit. Help you out. Looks like so. So this is what this is all about is this little cone here. So we're going to split that now and then we screw this up over his head. As tight as we can get on his head. So I'm pretty happy with that there. Mm -hmm. So that's in place and then the skirt then comes down. Like so. And if you want to, you put his eyes the right way around. <laughs> And um, you can actually just put. You gotta be careful not spike yourself. That's why I'm taking a bit of time, you folks. Put one of those legs or the body through the skirt. That's uh, through the wire. Sorry, my apologies. Sorry guys, I'm totally slightly yeah. blind. Got it, yeah, that's it. So, unfortunately, <laughs> it does look normally like that, but that's normally straight. <laughs> but because that hook there is, doesn't go down and bring that back that way, it's looking a bit skin with, but you get the gist of it. <laughs> yeah, and it looks good. So that normally sits like that. That's how it normally sits. Yeah. Okay, like so. And then our baits, um, it'll swim, so, just a few little uh, tips um, when you're using this type of rig, Ben, is um, if you're using like a, um, a gar, we actually grab it along here where the line is along the gar, and when the gar's defrosted, of course, and start here and pop along here, and you actually feel and hear the flesh pop off the its backbone. And the flesh will actually rise up quite a bit higher, and it becomes extremely supple, so that the garfish will actually swim even with gang hooks in it. Um, that's one thing that's garfish. If you're trolling, say, um, a, a bonito or even slimy bonito especially, um, even at this size here, what you do down the back here where the tail gets really skinny, you actually try not to break the skin, but you snap the internal um, joint of the, of the bone and the tail becomes very, very soft and floppy and it really wiggles in the water as you're pulling along. And um, just nothing to guard too before you put the hooks in, you push down from the chin down along here and squeeze all his poo tube out and that'll stop it from blowing up inside as well. Um, some people do tie up the gills but I don't, I don't have enough time, the fish normally hit the bait before it gets a chance to blow up. Um, but that's it folks, yeah. Lovely. Well yeah, thanks Doug. No worries at all. That's so, absolutely awesome. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sure everybody, uh, everybody at home watching this has now got a very good idea of how you do your rigs and why you catch so many fish. Anything yeah. been from that size? So that size bait is fine. The, a mackerel that's hungry. Did I say elephants eat peanuts? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Thanks, Doug. Okay, no worries at all, Ben. Thank you.